Netflix is going to be reporting quarterly results after the closing bell today. The stock now up more than 20 percent in the last three months. Joining us right now to talk more about it, Tom Rogers, Newsweek editor at large, executive chairman of Orbit Gaming and Entertainment, as well as a former CNBC president and now a CNBC contributor. Tom, always great to see you. What are you great expecting this here. afternoon? And, and what are the broader implications, if there are any, for the rest of the industry, which is to say, is Netflix in a, in a category of one, a category of its own, or is there something that we can take away from this? Well, I think Netflix is in a category of its own, and I've been saying that for quite some time. I remember you asking me a couple of years ago what was going to be the most valuable media company out there, and uh, I said Netflix, and uh, clearly it's become that. Uh, you take the parks business out of Disney and the media to media comparison. Netflix is probably about three times as valuable as Disney right now. But the thing that I think really distinguishes it when you look around the rest of the media industry is just the ability of management at Netflix to really focus. They have uh, no uh, M&A intrigue. They have no activists. They have uh, no linear decline. Uh, they don't have to focus on uh, sports rights. They don't have a dis depressed stock. Uh, they got no drama which is why I guess uh, Obama is working with them. Uh, but just being able to focus on execution of the business relative to the rest of the media industry right now is a huge advantage. Uh, do you think there's any drawback to uh, Mr. Suber going to go start his own studio, that news we just reported uh, last night and this morning? Well, he's obviously had a lot of success, and that happens when uh, people uh, have a lot of success. They... Uh, uh, find new opportunity and move on. Look, uh, I think Netflix has gotten more Oscar nominations for the last three years than any other studio uh, coming out of nowhere in the last six years. Uh, but uh, the advantages that Netflix has continues. Uh, they uh, are the one place that isn't looking to cut their programming budget, so they have plenty of resource to put into film. Uh, even a mediocre film on Netflix gets a whole lot more audience than things that open in theaters these days, just given the size of their uh, their household reach. Uh, so they're not going to have any problem uh, attracting uh, major talent to, to work with them. Um, the films have not kind of hit the cultural zeitgeist level that right. a number of TV shows <laughs> have on Netflix. So I think there's an opportunity here to kind of upgrade the overall cultural impact of their films, uh, but uh, they won't have any problem continuing. How, how concerned are you or not about churn, especially given the strike that happened over the summer, the lack of new content? I mean, they're still putting out new content, but you might say that some of the sort of super elevated stuff that I think they were probably hoping to have out now and uh, come the next six months uh, may be a little temporarily at least on hold. Well, they certainly had to cut back on production this year, given the strike. But even with that, they've introduced uh, uh, 99 original seasons over the course of uh, TV seasons over the course of 2023. Uh, Max is down to about 13, Hulu down to 12. So still an enormous advantage in terms of original production. And they got a number of other things in terms of wind at their back. Uh, they're still uh, able to drive subscribers off of the password sharing crackdown. Uh, the lower price right. on the ad tier is certainly an advantage for them. They're packaging now with the ad tier. Verizon offering a Netflix Max right. package at ten dollars. Tom, how advantaged are they in that now some of the other media companies that historically did not want to sell to them, at least for the last five years, because they were worried about making Netflix stronger, are now in a position where frankly, just to, just to stay alive to some degree or to, to at least create some cash, they're now selling on to Netflix. A ab absolutely. And just as the strike uh, hurt everybody's uh, programming slate, uh, here is Netflix uh, getting uh, key programming. Uh, think Suits, think Young Sheldon, uh, that uh, is new programming to the Netflix audience. And Netflix has had great success if it's right. new to their audience, they can light it up and promote it, and it uh, does very well with them. So they're effectively using uh, it this period right. where the strike has uh, has Tom, cut everybody's programming down, from uh, a, using their programming against them. I, 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 it sounds to me, and we've had this conversation before, that of the media companies right now, you, lo you like Netflix the best. I don't know if you like Netflix the best at this valuation, $484, $485. Bucks. 
after Netflix, who do you like? And is there a value play in here? Is there somebody you think, I mean, I don't know what you think of Disney these days. Obviously, Paramount is uh, in the middle of uh, potentially takeover talks. We've talked about that on the air before. I don't know where you, you sit on, on about Warner Brothers. What, what's the sort of, if you were to stack rank them as an investment, given their valuations today? That is a very tough one, uh, because uh, Netflix, if it uh, uh, meets or beats consensus, as I expect it would do, it's clearly going to be on a path to the end of next year, having about 300 billion, uh, 300 million uh, subs worldwide, uh, close to a billion in audience, one number of people per household. None of the others are, are going to be close to that in terms of their streaming services, and the decline of the linear is still going to hit them all. I guess... Uh, leverage on top of that, uh, 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 the, the guys with the biggest leverage I put toward the bottom, uh, guys who have less leverage, uh, I guess I put toward the top, uh, but they all have issues that they haven't uh, really begun to deal with in terms of how much the linear decline is going to hurt them. And we're going to see a lot of action in terms of all trying to figure out new structures going forward uh, because uh, their streaming services just are not growing fast enough to make up right. for the decline of the linear.